Okay, now we're going to talk about derivatives of power functions. Things like this, f of x is equal to x to the eighth, or maybe x to the sixth, or x to the thirteenth, or something like that. Somewhere there's some power, x raised to some power. And we'll see how to take the derivative of a function like that and learn a quick and easy shortcut. But first, let's uh, do a quick review of Pascal's triangle. Because this will show up in the problems that we do leading to the formula for the derivatives of power functions. Pascal's triangle, singular, right there. Okay, Pascal's triangle is this. You put a 1 here, and then a 1 and a 1. So the first row just has a single number, and then the second row has two numbers, and then the next row will have three numbers, and the numbers on the outside are always 1. And then the number here in the middle is going to be made by adding this one and this one, those two together. So in the middle there, I end up putting a 2. Okay, and then the next row, I'll put a 1 on the outside, and then I'm going to have another number here. That's going to be 1 plus 2 gives me a 3, and a 1 plus 2 there gives me a 3. And I could keep going. I'll put 1s on the outside, and then this here will be a 4, and a 6, and a 4, and so on. And you can go on forever. And these numbers are useful in a lot of ways. One of the ways they are useful is in expanding a binomial raised to a power. So if we were told, for example, to expand a plus b to the fourth, okay, we can just use the, the fourth line of Pascal's triangle and think of this as line zero. So that's one, two, three, and four, the fourth line right there these numbers will actually be coefficients in the answer when we work this out. Now we don't have to multiply all of this out by hand. That would be rather tedious. What we can just do is say, okay, this is a, and it's going to be to the fourth, so I'm going to write down a to the fourth, and then I'm going to write a cubed times b, and a squared times b squared, and a to the first times b cubed, and then a b to the fourth. And so notice these numbers here. I start with the a to the fourth, and then I go a to the third, a to the second, a to the first, and a to the zero. You could imagine an a to the zero right there, which is really just a one, because anything to the zero is one, and we don't write that. And then here I have b to the zero. You could imagine a b to the zero or just a one there. And then a b to the one, and a b to the two, and a b to the three, and a b to the four. And you write those down, and then you use these numbers for your coefficients. So I'm going to write 1 a to the fourth, and you don't even have to write the 1. And then this is a 4 a cubed b, and a 6 a squared b squared, and a 4 a b cubed, and then a 1 over there. And again, you don't have to write the 1. And again, those numbers, the 1, the, the, the 4, the 6, the 4, and the 1, came from that appropriate row of Pascal's triangle. And then you add these terms up. So that's what it is. a plus b to the fourth is this. So when you're working on derivatives of power functions, trying to produce a general formula for derivatives of power functions, and that's what we're about to do, you need to be able to expand binomials like that. So Pascal's triangle is the quick and easy way to do it. Named, of course, after Blaise Pascal, one of my favorites. Okay, we'll do a simple one here f of x equals x squared, find f prime of x. f prime of x will be the limit as delta x approaches 0 of f of x plus delta x minus f of x all over delta x. That's the definition of a derivative. So let's apply that to this function. This will be the limit as delta x approaches 0, okay, what is f of x plus delta x? Well, we just put that in for the variable x, and we get x plus delta x squared, that's f of x plus delta x, minus f of x, which is simply x squared all over delta x. And now we have a binomial raised to a power, and we need to expand that. And that one's pretty easy to do. This is the limit as delta x approaches 0, and when we expand this, we get x squared plus 2x delta x 
plus delta x squared minus x squared all over delta x. And then the thing to take note of is that this x squared cancels out. Pay particular attention. That's going to happen every time. And then also note that all the terms remaining up here have a delta x in them. This one happens to have more than one. And so we can factor out a delta x and cancel. So we get, we get the limit as delta x approaches zero. I'll factor out that delta x. So we have delta x times 2x plus delta x all over delta x. And then these guys cancel out. And we're left with the limit as delta x approaches zero of 2x plus delta x. And we can take the limit. Clearly, as delta x approaches zero, I'll, I'll go ahead and write it out here. And you'll be able to see it clearly. The limit as delta x approaches zero of 2x plus delta x. Now clearly, as this thing goes to zero, we're simply left with the 2x. So that's our answer. The derivative of x squared is 2x. So just take note of that and then watch for similar things to happen in the next example. Okay, in this example we're told f of x equals x cubed. Find f prime of x. Well, f prime of x will be the limit as delta x approaches zero of x plus delta x cubed minus x cubed over delta x. So this is f of x plus delta x, and then we have minus f of x. So now we need to expand this binomial, x plus delta x cubed. So let's do that. We still have the limit as delta x approaches zero, and when, when we expand this using the coefficients from Pascal's triangle, we get x cubed plus 3x delta x. No, I'm sorry, that's a 3x squared delta x plus 3x delta x squared plus delta x cubed. And then we still have this minus x cubed over there. And all of that is over delta x. Now, as before, this term on the beginning and the end, it's x cubed this time, but they cancel out x cubed and a minus x cubed. And then all of these remaining terms have a delta x, and we can factor out the delta x. So let's do that. We get the limit as delta x approaches zero of, we'll bring the delta x out here, and that leaves us with a 3x squared. And then this is a 3x delta x plus delta x squared all over delta x. Now these delta x's, of course, cancel out. And that leaves us with the limit as delta x approaches zero of 3x squared plus 3x delta x plus delta x squared. Now notice what happens. If we let delta x actually go to zero, all these terms that contain a delta x are going to disappear. And we're simply left with this one term, the only term that doesn't have a delta x remaining after we've factored our delta x out. So that's all that's left. Once delta x goes to zero, we simply have 3x squared. So that's our derivative of x cubed. And every single time we do something like this, no matter what the power is, these terms are going to cancel out. And then out of the remaining terms, they will all have delta x's. And all of them will have more than one delta x, except for one term. And so when we factor out the delta x, all of the terms except for one will still have a delta x remaining. And those terms will disappear when we actually take the limit, where delta x actually goes to zero. And so all we're left with is this first term. And that comes from the coefficient on Pascal's triangle. OK, and here's one more. And instead of working it out, I'll go ahead and show you the answer. f primed of x here ends up being 4x cubed. 
and the way the numbers always work out, given the coefficients that come out of Pascal's triangle, or that come from expanding the, the binomial, if you have a simple power function, such as this, x to the fourth, you can always take this exponent and bring it out front as a multiplier, and then reduce the exponent by one. And so if we want to generalize this, we can say, if f of x is x to the n, then f prime of x is equal to n times x to the n minus 1. And that's worth writing there up on its own page. If f of x is x to the n, then f prime of x is equal to nx to the n minus 1. And that fact is known as the power rule for derivatives. And next we'll come back and look at some examples that make use of that.